Hi, my name is Rick Plunkett, and thanks for buying the Crate Tour Pack. Inside the uh, Crate Tour Pack, you're going to find all the basic ingredients you need for learning how to play guitar. You'll find a premium set of strings, a string winder, guitar cable, picks, and even a set of headphones for private playing. This is the Crate Electra guitar. Well, what makes this guitar unique is that it's got a double coil humbucking pickup back here in the rear position. And uh, that pickup will allow you to get a uh, more aggressive, more overdriven sound than uh, you normally would if you just had three single coil pickups. I'm going to demonstrate the different sounds that you can get uh, with this guitar because of the pickups. Let me turn up the volume knob here. Um, this guitar has a five position toggle switch located right here in front. And we're going to start all the way down in the down position. And uh, when you're in that position, only your rear pickup this uh, double coil here is engaged. The other two pickups are, are shut off. So, uh, and it gives you this kind of a sound. You can hear that kind of twangy, aggressive, almost overdriven sound. And uh, that's what that double coil gives you. Now, when you uh, bring the toggle switch up to the, to the next position up, that engages the middle pickup as well as the rear position pick up and you get a little bit warmer sound. Sounds like this. You can hear it still has a little bit of that twanginess that uh, is characteristic of that rear pickup, but uh, a little more warmth and a little more uh, fatness of tone is added. Now when you bring it up to the third position, the middle position, that isolates the middle pickup. And uh, it's just the middle pickup by itself and it's still a different tone. It sounds like this. Continuing on, I'll bring it up to the fourth position. And in the fourth position, the middle and the front pickup are engaged. And it sounds like this. And the last position, is the front pickup all by itself. And it sounds like this. OK, in addition to your uh, toggle switch and your volume knob, you've also got two tone knobs located just under the volume knob. And uh, each of those tone knobs are assigned to a different pickup. Neither one of the tone knobs affects the rear position pickup. Uh, the bottom tone knob affects the middle pickup. The toggle switch is in a position that uh, has the middle pickup on. And in the same way, when I bring the toggle switch up to engage the, only the front pickup, the middle tone knob affects that one. The Crate Electra also comes equipped with a, a tremolo arm also known as a whammy bar. And uh, you can use that to uh, create a few different kinds of effects. What it essentially does is it uh, lowers the pitch of the strings, like so. OK, what we've got over here is the Crate EL10G Electra Series amp, and that comes with your tour pack. Start over here on the left hand side, you have your standard quarter inch input that you plug your guitar into. This is your overdrive section, and the boost and the gain knobs control your overdrive section. This is the, the section that you get your distortion. I'll turn up the gain knob. <laughs> And you can hear a distortion sound. As you increase the gain, you increase the amount of distortion. By turning your gain knob all the way off, you have a clean sound. This is the volume knob that controls the clean sound. These three knobs are your equalization, the bass, the mid, and the treble your lows for the bass, your treble for the highs. Over here you have an 
insert jack, which is a standard quarter inch for running effects. It's your effects send and return. Your headphone jack for uh, pl private playing, and the headphones are included in your tour pack. This is your indicator light, indicating whether the amp is on or off. And here's your power switch. All right, before we move on, uh, we're going to tune the guitar. It's important for the guitar to be in tune. And uh, what we're going to use today to tune is a pitch pipe. This is a pitch pipe. And uh, on the pitch pipe, it has six different pitches corresponding to the uh, six strings on the guitar. We're going to start with the uh, six string, the E string. Make sure our volume knob is all the way up. Move on to the A string, the fifth string. Find that pitch on your pitch pipe. Moving on to the D string, fourth string. Moving on to the third string, the G. Second string, or the B string. And finally, the first string, or the E string, the high E string. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to play some chordal riffs. And we're going to get you playing some chords and uh, maybe even some licks that go along with those. Okay, that was a little uh, Keith Richards uh, rock blues kind of style, and uh, I'll show you exactly what that was. It was a 12-bar blues progression uh, in the key of A, and um, how it's played is you're just using, really, essentially, for, for, the, for the chords themselves, for the most part, you're just using two strings. Um, starting in the key of A, you're using the open A string, and putting your first finger on the fourth string, second fret, E, you're getting just a, a, a fragment of a chord. It's called a chord fragment. And uh, even if you wanted to, and it's completely up to you, you could uh, also engage that, uh, that A note on your third string, second fret right here by um, barring the two strings together with your first, first finger like this. And you can do that, and that's called a triad. Any three notes together forming a chord is called a triad. So that's your starting position. And then uh, your second position is your third finger on the fourth string, fourth fret, your F sharp. And that gives you your, uh, your kind of blues rock sound. And again, if you want to use that A, that, that octave A there on your third string, second fret, you can certainly do that. But you would want to deaden that when you go up to your, to your next position there. You don't, want to, you don't want to use that B because it just doesn't have the right sound. So using your root chord and then getting the uh, F sharp there. 
and playing those together like this. Now incorporating Keith Richards style is simply a, a technique because this particular chord progression is used in literally hundreds of different rock songs and blues songs, but what really gives um, a particular guitar player's distinct sound is the, the techniques that he, he chooses to use. Uh, Keith Richards um, liked to use a lot of bends and uh, hammer-on techniques. And uh, here's an example of a, of a way to, uh, to bend your fourth string on the fourth fret coming back down um, to give it a little different sound. First I'll play it without that technique and then I'll play it with the bend. <laughs> Now here it is with the bend. Now you hear how it gives it uh, that different sound? That's just the technique there. Now moving on, uh, we're going to drop down to the D chord or the D chord fragment. It's the exact same position on the exact same frets. You're just one string down. So now your first finger is on the third string second fret and the two strings that you'll be uh, uh, plucking are the D and the G strings. And it's the exact same pattern. And then next we drop down to the E, which is again, uh, very simply in your exact same uh, frets, you're just one string uh, down, it's your E string, open E, and uh, the, the B note on your A string, second fret, and those pluck together like this. And then returning to the A. So I'll play that little progression there in its entirety one time through. Now one lick that I did play that is, uh, sounds a lot like Keith Richards is uh, this one that I threw in in the key of A, starting on your uh, sixth string, A, fifth fret, and sliding using a slide up to your, uh, your seventh fret, B note, and then sliding up to your ninth fret, onto your fifth string, seventh fret, and then back down to where you were before. So the lick goes like this. I inserted that lick uh, while I was playing the song, and I'll do that for you now. Okay, another lick that I played in there was uh, starting here on your third string, second fret A, and uh, kind of uh, not really sliding up, just placing your third finger on your uh, on the B note there on the on the G string fourth fret, and then bending it up. You're going to utilize a bend here and uh, put your pinky on the second string fifth fret, and then you're going to bend up and play that note with your pinky and then bring it back down pulling off back to your second fret so the lick goes
Okay, that was a chord progression uh, in the style of Keith Richards. Um, and it's clear sound that uh, he sometimes used and was well known for. Um, I'm going to show you what those chords were. The first one is a C major seventh, and uh, it's fingered like this. You take your uh, third finger, place it on the fifth string, third fret, like so. You take your second finger, or your middle finger, and it goes on the fourth string, second fret. And then your pinky finger, or your fourth finger, on your second string, third fret. Then you have your C major seventh in the first position chord. Okay, the second chord is an F major in the first position, and it's first finger barring the first and second strings at the first fret. You're holding both of those strings down simultaneously. And then with your second finger, you're f placing that on the uh, third string, second fret, A, and then your third finger on the fourth string, third fret, F. And you're only going to be strumming the bottom four strings. Okay, the next part was uh, switching down to a, an A minor chord in the first position. First finger, second string, first fret C. And then your third finger goes on the third string, second fret A. And then your second finger, your middle finger, to the uh, fourth string, second fret E. And then I switch from A minor to a G major chord. Your middle finger on the A string, 2nd fret, B. Your 3rd finger on the 6th string, 3rd fret, G. And then your little finger, your pinky finger, all the way down on your 1st string, 3rd fret. And all strings will be applied in this chord. All right, the next style we're going to look at is uh, alternative rock. And uh, there are a couple of different sounds, actually many different sounds, um, under, the, uh, under the title of alternative rock. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different examples with a clear sound. Okay, what that was, was four chords um, played with a clear sound, and I've got my toggle switch all the way down so that the rear pickup only is engaged to get that twangier sound, which uh, Kurt Cobain would often use to begin his songs. And um, the four chords I'm using are uh, B flat, which is played here at the first fret, and uh, by simply placing your first finger on the fifth string, first fret, which is your B flat root note. And then your third finger, barring your fourth string at the third fret, which is your F note. And then also holding down your third string, the G string at the B flat note on the third fret. And you just need to play those three notes together. That's called a, a triad. Uh, it's also known as a, a power chord or a bar chord for rock music. Again, if you're just starting and if you're just getting into bar chords, you'll, you'll have a little bit of difficulty holding the strings down, but uh, with practice and work, it'll come. Second chord is an A flat played here at the fourth fret in your uh, what's called E chord, uh, bar chord form, just meaning that uh, you're taking your E chord down here at the first position and sliding it up to the fourth fret position. And uh, by putting your first finger on the sixth string, fourth fret, your third finger on the fifth string, sixth fret, your fourth finger on the fourth string, sixth fret, you have that triad or that power chord of your A flat, consisting of your A flat your E flat fifth, and then your uh, A flat octave. Now by putting your second finger 
On the third string, you're just continuing that chord or completing that chord right here on the fifth fret, your C note. And of course, the entire chord, which is the way I played it in the progression. Your first finger is holding all six strings down. And then by placing your other three fingers uh, where I just showed you, you've got your A flat major um, bar chord. So you're going from your B flat to your A flat. Then the third chord, the next chord, is your F major bar chord, which is the exact same position, exact, I should say exact same fingering as the A flat, but played down here at the first fret. First finger on the sixth string, first fret. All the other fingers are exactly the same as they were in the previous chord, the A flat. So you've got your F major. Then the last chord in that riff is a D flat, which is played up at the fourth fret, just like your A flat, but excluding the sixth string, because your root note is the D flat on your fifth string, fourth fret, first finger. It's essentially the same as that first chord, that B flat but played up at the fourth fret. That's the bar chord form, the bar chord triad um, to play that. If you want to extend that chord, you could just uh, simply add the, uh, the second string. And then that adds another note. If we wanted to play all, all uh, five strings, instead of using uh, the bar chord form, you could use these three fingers at the sixth fret. But for alternative rock and most heavy rock, usually you're not going to use this kind of a chord fingering. In, in most cases, you're going to use a bar chord uh, like that. So I'll play that uh, for you again, those four chords together slowly, starting with the B flat to the A flat, to the F, to the D flat. Okay, there was that progression with a clear sound. And uh, as you probably know, alternative rock also uh, uses a lot of distortion. And uh, I'm going to play that very same progression for you with a heavy distortion sound, you'll hear the difference. All right, the last style we're going to look at is uh, heavy rock, and uh, we're going to focus in on the style of Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Okay, what I played there was uh, a heavy rock uh, chordal riff um, relying heavily on the low E string. Um, this is probably the most popularly used key in heavy rock because of that low E string sound. And the sound that I got on the guitar in addition to running uh, a distortion sound is I moved the toggle switch up and engaged uh, the other pickup so I could get a little fatter sound. And uh, I'll just go through that for you real quick. Um, in the key of E, relying heavily on the E string, the low E string, um, and the, uh, an E triad up at the seventh fret. Um, you want to place your first finger on the seventh fret, fifth string, and then your third finger up at the ninth fret, the uh, third and fourth strings, and bar those down so that you have 
these three strings using a, an E triad chord or an E power chord or E, e bar chord, which is very heavily used in, in your heavy rock and your heavy metal sounds. Okay, this next part on your E string to the fifth fret, and you're doing a kind of a chromatic little uh, um, lick there. That's A on your fifth fret, A sharp or B flat on your sixth fret, and then up to B on your seventh fret. And then going up to your fifth string, fifth fret for your D note. So it's like this. You'll notice I put a little uh, vibrato by shaking my finger here on the uh, on that D note there on the fifth string for effect. Makes it a little more interesting. I know we've covered a lot of ground on this video. Um, the key is practice. Practice the bar chords. Practice using your pinky. And uh, there's a lot of great instructional material that you can get out there, videos and books. And uh, I'd also like to mention that uh, Crate offers a great uh, line of gear from small practice amps all the way up to pro gear, pro guitar and bass amps. And uh, just go to your local music dealer and ask um, what they have available and, and, and uh, get into what's best for you and your needs. But uh, again, just keep practicing and good luck.